2019's Dark with a Q video game review. So, I really, really love this game. This is probably my favorite recent game I've played. Um, yeah. Uh, right, and when I when I say critical things of it in this video, it's not because I feel like anybody forced me to play it or to make a vlog about it. And, uh, let's see... Yeah, uh, I played it on the PC through Epic, and yes, the, the plot, I'm just going to quote Steam here. Dark tells the story of Lloyd, a boy who finds himself in the middle of a lucid nightmare. Unable to wake up, Lloyd has to face his fears and decipher the meaning of the dream. And yeah, so the, the tags that I felt especially help explain this game, the user-defined tags on Steam... Horror, adventure, puzzle, puzzle platformer, stealth, side-scroller, survival horror, psychedelic, and physics. Yeah, um, this is by far the most challenging recent puzzle game that I've played, and I am so glad to see this. It brings back the challenge of, like, really old-school puzzle games. You know, puzzle games that... Once you know what you're doing, it's not going to take a huge amount of time for you to get all the way through it. But, they want you to rent it for the whole weekend. I guess we just got to make it intensely difficult. Got to force the player to start over a million times. So you got to, yeah, spend the entire weekend playing until you get to the point where you can actually carry out every single thing. It has that kind of difficulty where you... Yeah, but without the frustration of having to start all the way over. You know, there are a number of places where you can fail over the course of the various levels, but when you fail, you won't have to redo that much. Like, you might still get annoyed. There was a time where I had to do the same thing like five times because I get screwing up near the very end, but I never had to play more than... I guess a minute or two of, of game, you know. The game does not allow you to save during a, a level or chapter, including in the DLC. So once you start, you're either gonna you're either gonna wanna make sure that you can complete it in that sitting, or you'll wanna make sure you at least have enough time that you can figure out a bunch of the puzzles and then you you know you memorize those for the next time you play. And, yeah, so sometimes you do have to do the same thing over. But if you fail, yeah, I think I've already explained that. Um, yeah, the, so this, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I want to just briefly talk about the, the DLC. For, for several of the stores, the DLC are free or just included with the price. So it's not really about, oh, do I want to spend this money on DLC? Because sometimes DLC is just, like, trying to scalp you. You know, just trying to get as much money out of you as possible. So I'm just talking about, you know... Okay, if hypothetically it costs money, you know, I'm, I always say get it on sale. But, yeah, I would... If I had paid money for the DLC, I would have been extremely happy. The DLC are some of the most fun. One thing you'll want to only start playing them once you've played at least several of the regular levels. It's not going to, as far as I can tell, it doesn't erase your progress. And, and right, right. Um, yeah, once you've unlocked, you know, once you've beaten Chapter 1, you can jump directly to Chapter 2, you know. So, so yeah. Um, but the, yeah, you, the DLC definitely expect you to already know the game and be pretty good at it before you, but, but yeah. A lot of the best puzzles are in the DLC, and it's just like, you know, some DLC, it's like, ah, uh, wow, they just really did this because they wanted to get you playing it for slightly longer. No, this, these are absolutely amazing. These two DLC levels, the, the Tower and the Crypt, both incredible. Yeah, um, there's, there's several new types of puzzles and and like yeah things you have to keep track of and they do such a great job with that 
this is very much like I recommend playing the entire game. There, I don't think I've done it recently, but there's a couple of games where it's like, okay, play until this part and then just stop because at that point it just becomes a mess. This is not that. This is, yeah. So uh, at the very start of the game, Lloyd is in his home, goes to his bed to go to sleep. He gets in bed and basically like, his spirit leaves his body and enters the dream world. And more than one level will end with him, you know, going through a pathway, ending up back inside his bedroom, going to bed, trying to sleep, his spirit leaving his body, traveling to the new level. You know, very effective, like, really getting across, you know, it is... Because that, that really, sometimes it really do be like that. Sometimes you're, you're in, like, a, a nightmare and you're, you're thinking, you know, okay, if I just... This place should be safe, this action should be safe, and you, you try to do it. Nope, made, you know, did not work. So this, yeah, captures that very nicely. In addition to straightforward point-and-click type of stuff, the game also has a mechanic where you can walk on walls, which, similar to the portal gun in, well, portal, changes the game as, you know, now it's allowing for these physics-based puzzles. Maybe the solution is not on the ground, but on the ceiling. Sure, you can't walk through that door, but you might be able to walk up it and get into a different room like that and the yeah on at least one occasion you can literally use the fact that gravity at least some of the time changes when you walk on walls of the ceiling you know very much dream logic to some of the puzzles and there's also this thing where you can like turn certain rooms 90 degrees and you know it's it's kind of like if Inception were a, a puzzle game, you know, the, the way, in, in that movie, they also have this, you know, there's the, the part where the road, like, folds up, and, and, you know, these various things, yeah, here, you know, you can actually, you, yeah, really, really love that, you know, I, I love when a piece of, uh, a piece of media can deliver something that I haven't seen anywhere else, I've never played a game that, had all of these things. I've played games that had some of them. You know, if you want to talk like, oh, you can manipulate dreams and there's dream lodging and such, Psychonauts 1, excellent game. Another example of dream logic in puzzles is that sometimes you pick up something small and then when you use it, it's suddenly like normal sized. And they also don't just let you always solve things like that. You can only walk on walls if you can. Uh, let's see. Yeah, right. Um, you can, if if you can walk up to a wall, you know, and and you you know, if you can get close enough to touch it, and and Lloyd like puts his hands on it, that's you know, that's the visual indicator that yeah, this is a wall you can walk on, and yeah, you know, if you can't, if there's even a a little gap, if you if you're standing here, the wall's here, there's a gap, you can't wall walk. But, however, if there is a, a big gap, you, you can walk off the edge, and then it'll reorient, and you can walk on the... Yeah. And, let's see. Some puzzles require you to direct electricity to a specific place. There's, a, there's several puzzles like that, where something is going to move from one point to... You know, you, you got to get it from where it starts to where it ends. And maybe along the way, there's gaps that you have to fill. Maybe there's paths that you have to guide it along. And honestly, considering how many there are, I was really impressed with it. It never felt like excessive. I, I never, at no point in this game, did I spot a puzzle, realize, oh, it's going to be one of those, and think, again, there were definitely times where I was like, this is going to be tough, but I was never, like, just feeling, okay, this is, you know, which was also not a diss, love old school, you know, puzzle games, but if you go back some years, I want to say it was like the 90s, but I honestly, yeah, pretty sure, in the 90s, there were definitely some puzzle games where they just kind of had to rely on the same kind of mechanic over and over because there was only so much games could do back then, and... Again, that's I'm I'm so glad that we're getting games like this that yeah, they remember how awesome games could be back then, but they also appreciate let's not force people to redo everything from the start. 
unless you you know leave the the chapter and have to go back and let's not you know yeah let's have some more variety and you know there yeah there's tile manipulation and they actually considering how many distinct types of of puzzles they do a really good job of making it like what's the word there's a uh, uh, intuitive you know like you know obviously in once once you know that you can use WASD and there's the the use key and sometimes there's you also use space for stuff and you know yeah there's there's certain puzzles where things work in a slightly different way but it's always very intuitive you know if if you've played you know do not make this the first puzzle game you ever play unless you really just yeah this is really going to kick your ass if you try to do that but yeah you know the the there's a there's a a good logic to how you interact with the puzzles and usually it'll tell you like if you're trying to adjust a thing you know it might straight up like uh, uh, put a, a light around the thing that you're interacting with if it needs to to make a, a clearer and there are certain certain puzzles where you know you can get like 90 percent of the way there but fail near the end and they'll for at least for the toughest of those I would say they make sure to make it clear okay you did this 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 and even this right but this is where you yeah got it slightly wrong so again you know you're we're not back to this thing of just well I gotta I guess I gotta start all over and just hope that you know now the the game has a dark gloomy atmosphere a lot of shadows whites and blacks there are mild stealth elements every so often you have to sneak past you know sometimes it's just one or two enemies you know maybe you have to walk slowly so as to not attract their attention there there are certain enemies where you know when they look where you'll be walking you'll want to not be where they're looking you know so just the game doesn't force you to just okay you know just throw you in the deep end and hope you you can can swim no it's like once you once you see something and that's something i really appreciate about the stealth in this game you can tell when you when you look at something you can tell if it's dangerous for you to get you know if yeah whenever something is stealth you can tell from just looking at which that is sometimes a problem in in stealth games sometimes you can't tell if a thing would actually be dangerous for you but yeah you can tell from from just looking and then you know just give yourself a couple of seconds just look at how it moves you know maybe it doesn't even move very much but they usually there's at least a little bit of movement maybe the you know maybe they'll they'll look straight a lot of the time and then every so often they'll like sink their head down and that's when you wanna move you know and yeah that uh, let's see and and the um, there are let's see yeah sometimes you have to hide Lloyd either behind something or above something and it's always easy to tell when you need to and it's you know every time you do it you just you walk to the hiding spot and the the icon for you know you can interact with this comes up you press use Lloyd takes care of it from that you know whether it's like a one small movement or several movements in a row in order to get the hiding spot Lloyd will take care of that you don't have to worry and that's again you know if you go old school stealth there are some games where you know like I love the the thief trilogy well first two anyway there were definitely some times in in that where I until I really got used to it after a while I, I but there were definitely some times early on where I couldn't quite tell if something would hide me or not but you know yeah once you get the hang of it that that really works in, in those games but there are games where you just really struggle to find out is is this enough to hide or do I need to do more and here it's, it's yeah very very straightforward and let's 
see. Like most stealth games, sometimes there's frustration, but unlike many, it's extremely rare for you to simply not be able to tell why the stealth is failing or what to do in instead, which, you know, I I would definitely say there's stealth games that I ended up just... I, I stopped playing after a while because I was like, I have no idea what I'm... How... How is this not working? I thought I was doing what I was supposed to to hide. And let's see. Yeah, there are. There's a good variety of puzzles. Some of the base. Some are based on inventory. Inventory. I already mentioned some are based on physics. At least one puzzle is literally just a simple maze. But because the camera spins 360 degrees and 270 of those degrees do not allow you to see the maze. You can still move the, the ball through the maze if you picked up enough of it and, you know, you, you listen to noise. Also, 180% of it, you see the scary creature that is slowly making its way to where you are, and if you don't solve it in time, yeah, it's, you know, you get the, the rare for this game, first-person perspective scare. And although some of the puzzles are very challenging, the user interface is very easy to understand. And let's see. And right, there are. Yeah, so I, I already mentioned you know some sort of, some of the chapters you can twist at least part of the level 90 degrees, which obviously increases the options for puzzles. It incre as it increases how many different places you can go and sometimes part of a puzzle solution requires you to move a platform so you can walk across it and or move it so it leaves, leaves a gap you can wall walk into opening up a new area of the level these couple of things really make it feel like there are a lot of different things you could hypothetically at least try and obviously there's only ever one correct solution which is either going to in intrigue you or frustrate you and let's see, you know, sometimes it'll do one of those at one point, but do another at another point. And yeah, it's definitely not a game that I would recommend to people who already know about themselves that they get frustrated when a puzzle is kind of kicking their brain's ass. It's a game where carrying out the solution does not take very much time at all, but figuring out the solution, getting to a place where you can carry it out, getting stuff exactly right, like exact timing sometimes make it take longer to complete. I don't know the exact detail, but I can imagine a relatively high percentage of rage quitting amongst anyone who thought this was just going to be easy. You know, something I would definitely say to anyone who worries they might become obsessed with getting through a level in a single sitting since it only saves at the restarted levels. Keep in mind, it is a game where if it takes you multiple tries to get through a level, you're not going to lose something in a level that you cannot get back exactly the way you got it provided that you remember what you did that worked. You know, there's not one of those games where there's like random elements that completely change. And let's see... Yeah. Um, there are a number of games where a, a bunch of elements mean that it's very difficult to recreate exactly. So if you lose a lot of progress, it might mean that trying it again is going to get very difficult. You know, th this game doesn't have resource management where you'll find you wasted a healing item because you used it and then had to do a long part over where you'll need it again. This is very much a case where you go in, assess, you get the hang of how to go about stuff, start solving puzzles, and if you only get part of the way before you have to stop for whatever reason, if you can remember what you did that worked well, you'll be able to recreate that, you know, fairly easily. And let's see. Yeah, uh, I appreciate one level has, you know, it, it takes place at least partially on a train where you move between the different train cars as the, the train is, is moving fast. It's not challenging to move between them, but it does add to, to the atmosphere. And I think that might be about... Um, let's see. Right, so I, I forget if I mentioned, but the it, it is, the camera is like side-scroller type camera. And, uh, yeah, this, this, um, yeah, you can, you can, according to how long to beat, you can complete this in, you know, the, the main in two hours, it, uh, three and a half hours, main and sides, and completionist is about four hours, which is also my experience. 
Um, so as far as you know, graphics and such, there are videos on the you know Steam, GOG.com, and Epic. They give you a, a really good sense of the atmosphere, the graphics, and such. I don't have a lot to a lot more to say. I just want to say they really did a great job on the graphics. The the use of light and shadow tremendously effective. Um, you know, it's a it's a game where the lighting is always kind of gloomy and, and creepy. There's no area of the game that is just like, oh wow, this is so well lit. It's not at all creepy to to look at. And yeah, the the fact that there's not a huge amount of color and it is very much these gloomy sort of Ah, what's the word? Toned down kind of colors. There's not a lot of bright color in in this game. You know, the, the there is some. The the electricity is sometimes this, you know, almost like neon, you know, teal kind of thing. But yeah, not a game with a lot of color, and that really works for the the atmosphere. And, yeah, I appreciate the, the controls, you know, WASD, you know, once you've played several games that have that, it's, it is a very, yeah, you, you get used to how that works. And, yeah, great job on the enemy design, you know, the, yeah, just some, some really, really creepy, you, you'll know when you're looking at something that might hurt you and let's see I think that might be about yeah so the the overall game is fairly linear but there are kind of it is a game where you can't immediately tell which I greatly appreciate it's very very gutsy like there's this thing about, oh, you know, people today just don't have the same kind of patience for, for games that, you know, people did in the 90s, which, I remember the 90s. It was not as, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, you know, yeah, of course you know how to swim. You know, you have to swim to get to school or something. You know, that's a terrible metaphor. But, yeah, you know, this game does really just put you in this world that is extremely open where it's not that you can go anywhere at any time but there are a lot of different areas to an in to to just a single level sometimes and yeah it doesn't really tell you like you you pick up things you'll you'll spot oh there's a place i can put a thing there and then later you'll get that thing and you know, you'll remember, oh, right, there was nothing, or maybe you didn't go exploring that much, and you just, yeah, you know, this is this is a game where if you don't figure out solutions, and you just try to brute force, it's going to take forever. There's puzzles in this that are just, yeah. And, right, the audio is amazing. So the, let's see, the, where did I... Yeah, here we go. Um, the sound design is by Bjorn Jakobsen, known for his works on such games as Cyberpunk 277 and Hitman, and does not disappoint. Amazing sound work. This, yeah, just un unreal. And, yeah, this is a game that is both challenging and fun. Like, there's such a satisfaction to completing a, a puzzle properly. And again, you know, if you whether you get the puzzle right on like the second try or the twentieth, like it's not gonna force you to redo the part leading up to the puzzle itself. Even if like if you're stuck on the last puzzle of a level, you know, and this is of course something that can get really frustrating. You you know, uh, I'm so close. And it's just this one puzzle, and if you you know, obviously if you exit then you're gonna have to do the whole thing over again but on the other hand you yeah if you fail 20 times as long as you get in on the 21st you will eventually get there and you don't have to play the entire level over 
and let's see. I'm not sure I would necessarily say that replayability is like intensely high. Um, I would probably say, you know, if you if you own this for several years and you you know if after a while you forget how to solve the puzzles, so you have to, so it's like the first time you played it. Yeah, and and there is a there is like a little bit of like collectible stuff, but other than that, it, yeah, not not really. But I I don't think it needs more than that. I did not encounter any bugs or glitches, and right, I quite appreciate like for the you know the way I've described the the graphics, it might sound oh you know does that not get kind of old. I would say the the creativity to the designs to, to the settings, like no two levels look exactly alike. The like you could show me a okay, there's perhaps a few parts that look very similar, but overall, yeah, there's a tremendous variety to the the different, you know, yeah. So the 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 DLC of the uh, a tower and a crypt. I already mentioned. There's a level where it's like on a train. There's one that's like in a hospital. You know, just yeah, a lot of very different ones. And the level design is is really really good. Uh, like you get a sense of like it feels like you're traveling into a world, which like at the end of the day, you know. There's the, the puzzles that there are, and everything else is basically just like kind of background, maybe some environmental storytelling, but they make it feel like a world. It, you know, which, for, for this kind of thing, it can work really well. You know, it is in part horror. It works really well if it feels like a real world that you're in, rather than just a bunch of puzzles that you have to solve. And I think that is everything that I have to say so yeah unlike you know several of the other things I've recently you know done videos on of, of these games this one is not currently on sale on one of the right and I forget if I mentioned when I got it on epic it was free all I did was was claim it and I feel like there's one more thing. Um, right, I think that the, you know, GOG.com has these two, if you go to the store and look up the game, there are these two GIFs that really give you an idea of the, the this thing of, you know, changing, yeah, one of them shows the wall walk and another shows this thing of rotating a room and how the rotation can be used to your advantage and I think that might be right um, apparently the the developer you know has expressed you know that they appreciate you know it frustrated some people that you can't save partway through levels the, the developer has apparently said, you know, they, they didn't quite know how to implement that, but they're going to in, in future games. And actually, the... Um, let's see... Uh, oh, wait, no. I think I'm thinking of something else. Now, um, right, and on, yeah, on Steam, the this compared this to... to Two games I've I've played, Outlast and Alan Wake, and yeah, um, there's definitely some sort of that. You know, Alan Wake does have this thing of you know you gotta. There's some, yeah, what's it called, the um, resource management in in that one, and you know Outlast, not especially like you know the the. Puzzles, if we want to call them that, is you know much much simpler. You know, if we're talking puzzles, I would say this is more more similar to something like Penumbra or Amnesia or that sort of thing. 
Um, I think that might be all that I have. But yeah, um, absolutely, 100% recommend this to anyone looking for a puzzle game that is, like, just, yeah, really, really just puts you in a place and allows you to go, like, there's some puzzle games and, and such where, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, you can, you can move around in this small area, and here it's like, okay, here's, here's the level, like, you can't necessarily access everywhere right away, but if you're, like, just gonna try out everything until something eventually works, it can take you an absolute eternity to, to figure everything out, you know. Yeah, um, 100% recommended. Really, really love this one.